my name is Victoria and I'm going to be telling you the story of the gold horn of Triglo. Now Triglo is uh, the highest mountain in Slovenia, which is where I am from and where this story is from. Uh, it's one of my absolute favourite stories from when I was a child. Uh, my grandmother used to tell it to me and it's just always stayed with me. Partly I think it's because it's got quite a few characters and um, so many different perspectives that you can look at this story from. So many different people that you can take the message from. Um, my grandma used to tell me lots of stories and she'd always, at the end, add a little nugget of her own wisdom uh, that she'd pull from out of the story. And with this particular story, she always managed to say something different, to find some new meaning. Um, and I think another reason is that it's got something which many Slovenian stories and fairy tales have, which is an acknowledgement of the darker side of life. Um, you know, they're sort of saying, yes, there is light and there is beautiful things and, and magical creatures and good people, but there is also darkness and there is bad and wrong and evil in the world as well and they coexist, and that's okay. Um, and I think it's really taught me to have a very realistic perspective of the world. Um, but yeah, here is the story of Goldhorn. I hope you enjoy it. Goldhorn was a beautiful, majestic creature that lived high in the mountains of Triglo. Now, it was said that his golden horns were the key to a vast treasure hidden in the highest peak of the highest mountain of Triglo. And this was a treasure impossible to find. Far in the valley down below lived a brave, promising hunter who had fallen in love with an innkeeper's daughter who was known far and wide for her beauty and her virtue. Every day, he would bring her flowers and serenade her with kind words, winning her heart. But then, one day, a rich merchant came to the city, also setting his eyes on the young maiden. He won her affections by dancing with her and bringing her jewels of the likes she had never seen before. When the hunter approached her, she turned him away. He was devastated. And to make matters worse, the rich merchant taunted him and challenged him. He said, <clears throat> If you really love the maiden, well then, why don't you bring her Goldhorn's treasures? Angrily, the hunter set off into the winding, snowy peaks of Mount Triglo. He climbed the mountain for days, battling steep hills and cold winds, until finally one day he found his golden prey. He crept up quietly and slowly, aimed and shot, wounded, the poor creature dragged itself to a nearby ledge, leaving behind it a trail of blood. But from it sprang beautiful red flowers. Now the hunter ran after the creature, but it was too late. It quickly ate some of the flowers that sprang from its blood and was instantly healed. Strong now and angry, the creature charged towards the young hunter, who was blinded by the light of its golden horns, stumbled over the edge and fell to his death. Now back in the city, the innkeeper's daughter was bitterly sorry about the way she had treated the hunter and awaited in vain for her lover to return. As spring approached, melting the snow and flooding the Socha River, it brought her a sad gift. The dead body of the hunter, his lifeless hand still clutching on to a Triglau rose.